You know, I was just looking. God, I have a face for radio. <laughs> anyway, welcome back to uh, another video on this channel. Today, we're going to be talking about Starfield. Because I feel that not enough people are talking about it. Something like that. But I figure we give our two cents uh, about the game and uh, mostly what the future holds for Starfield. And mostly because I play a lot of RPGs. I have probably an uncounted number of hours in Skyrim. But I got a lot of time tied up in Bethesda games between Skyrim, uh, the old Legacy Edition, that I guess you would call it, uh, the Special Edition. I've not played the Anniversary Edition, but I have seen gameplay of it, and uh, I have plenty of mods for it that, you know, it just feels... Like the Anniversary Edition anyway. Um, I've played Ender All Forgotten Stories a ton on this channel so far. I plan on continuing that series. So don't worry about that if you're into it. Uh, I've played Fallout 3. played Fallout New Vegas. And I've played Fallout 4 a ton. Not played 76. I don't plan on playing 76 anytime in the future. But Fallout 4 definitely played quite a bit. So. And we've modded all those games to oblivion and back. Pun intended. Um, so I figure we would watch a little bit of... The official gameplay reveal, which was, hold up here, 70, or 7 months ago, so, we're, we're a little late on that, hundreds of YouTubers have already put their, uh, few cents in on that, but, I figure, hell, better late than never. And we could just keep the hype train rolling here. And I mean, all right. So I do feel that this game is going to be rocky, to say the least. Uh,. Is it going to be Game of the Year? Well, that is to be debated. Whether or not you think it's going to be Game of the Year, it's mostly up to you. Um, I, of course, am hoping for the best, that it's not too terrible of a release, and that the release is not as buggy as some games have been in the past. We're not going to name it. <laughs> Cyberpunk. <coughs> mm, excuse me. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, I don't know what got into myself there. Um, <laughs> so, hopefully we can... Uh, hopefully the game's going to be playable mostly um yeah i don't have anything else on that so let's just uh let's provide our commentary for uh it's 15 minutes long it's all right your area 51 video was almost two hours so this is nothing
<laughs> the wonder is not that the field of stars is so vast, but that the man has measured it. Anatoly France. Alright. By the way, this video is going to be linked in the description down below. It's hard to express how excited oh. all of us at Bethesda hey, to be here with you today. We're so grateful you're spending the time, and we know you've waited a long time to finally see Starfield. Uh, a long time. <laughs> That's an understatement ever. of the like year. Previous games, it's an epic role-playing game where you get to be who you want and go where you want. But this time, you'll be exploring space. So let's jump right in. This is early in the game as you arrive on the mysterious moon of Crete. Ah, the lovely Crete. We've probably seen this at least a dozen times. That much I know. Uh, am I excited for this game? Yes, I love space games. I bought into the hype. Uh, I got I got bought into the hype of No Man's Sky back in the day when that released, and I was disappointed to say the least but I was like well I'm over the return time I think it was I couldn't return it or I mean I couldn't get my money back for it I just left it installed on my computer and just let all right I was like I'll just put it off to the side Oh. Let me just pause. So I put it off to the side in my Steam account. And then I guess one day, it was probably like five, six years later. It's what it felt like. It was, it was, I know it was uh, after a lot of patches and a lot of, uh, a lot of patches and updates later. And... Boom. The game is actually really playable and kind of fun. Does it still feel monotonous from time to time? Yes. But is it fixed? Also, yes. I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. But, you know, like, I, like, the Callisto Protocol probably was the latest space game that came out. And I was just, I wasn't disappointed. I was, well, no, I was disappointed. It just wasn't, it wasn't really what I was expecting. I, I mean, I, I, I guess, I'm, which, game like that, I don't know what I was really expecting. Uh, definitely not like some, uh, state of the art, this will change your life forever type of game. I'm not looking for games like that. I'm looking for something fun. And something I could roleplay a little bit with. And RPGs have always been that way with me. So, I don't know. So, it's like with a lot of Bethesda games... Like, so I see these little bugs. I wonder if the bugs are going to be bugged. But, uh, I see, like, the little bugs and critters. Like this right here, for example. 
I've always been fascinated with this little scene because all right if this is going to be like normal reactionary stuff this would be like the first Bethesda game where it's not just like you come within the uh, NPC animals uh, I guess range that it would see you in and it would just instantly attack you. So it's like Skyrim, for example, or even Enderall, if you want to get into the, or even Fallout 4. You come within uh, the NPC and they automatically attack you for, well, that's the way that they were coded. This looks like it's a little slightly upgraded. Maybe it's the same way, but instead of the animal behavior just instantly attacking you, there's a range of which it notices your clothes. So its first reaction is to run away. You know, it's like, hey, I gotta get out of here. Here's something I don't know. So, hopefully, they, uh, hopefully that is a, uh, a feature. And it's not just created for this one scene. And just as far as, like, environments go, like, a lot of people said this looks empty, but I don't know, man. It's, it, I mean, sure, it's not, like, littered full of, like, buildings and shit, but I've actually seen emptier worlds, believe it or not, on my hunt to find the perfect, uh, RPG. This looks actually very, I, I guess, the, I mean, the further, the further away you look, obviously it's gonna look kind of blandish but looking at the rocks you know like the shrubberies that looks all well and interesting if anything this looks actually like gameplay it looks like it's raw this looks like modern graphics to me so uh interesting looking little uh base here though it looks very modular. So I wonder if you could, you know, because I know he's going to talk later about building bases. I just wonder if, you know, we build a base, could we make something look similar like this? Probably. It would appear that pirates of the Crimson Fleet are using the facility. I've seen a lot of commentary on uh, the guns and gunplay in this video about it, you know, it's just kind of looking a little off. I mean, sure, it, if it's unpolished, yeah, it's going to look a little off. But when it comes to, like, uh, sorry about pausing it again, but when it comes to, like, uh, commentary commentators talking about well it just doesn't look special or impactful or like what are you even looking for man like the gunplay looks like you're playing call of duty or any other bethesda game i just hope that they don't turn into bullet sponges i hate that <laughs> Where you're just like mag dumping. Into a uh, NPC and they just don't die, you know. The lock picking uh, function looks pretty cool. The little mini game. I, just, I don't really see a crosshair, so...
I, mean, I wonder how accurate really is. So much, so much After fire downrange. You're invited to join Constellation, <laughs> who, in the future the game is set in, are the last group of space explorers. To meet them, you'll head to the capital city of New Atlantis. New Atlantis. Thank you, Todd. Now this does look very interesting. Doesn't look very populated, but well, I mean it's more populated than previous uh, Bethesda titles. That's for sure. I think the amount of NPCs we've seen so far equates to like half of the game of Skyrim. Constellation. We have a lot to talk about. We're all here because we're committed to the biggest question of all. What's out there? Yeah, what is out there? Could be everything we've been looking for. As to what they are, what they're building. You'll be part of solving that puzzle now. So, you found something? A new guy found it. You dug up the artifact, right? That means you saw it. The visions? The artifact you found appears to be one of many, scattered across the galaxy. If we can find more, we can unlock their secrets. Beautiful, isn't it? The man who sold me this told me that it spoke to him. Of course, the Settled Systems is full of groups with other priorities. That's the Crimson Fleet! Everybody get ready! The Fleet doesn't follow the rules. Agree to work where you see Sister. Together, we take down these cutthroat pirates. Hmm. We're not just you know, I'm curious about the pirate thing. Because, you know, they mentioned that there's a, uh... The Crimson Fleet. So that was cool. We are not stopping. Most dusties don't even make it this far. Because whatever lies at the end of this road will change humanity forever. Hmm. That Thanks, you Todd. The stories in Starfield. But ultimately, it's not our story. It's the story you create by who you are and the choices you make. And that starts with character creation. It's our most flexible yet. You can customize all the elements of how you look. You'll pick a background that gives you three starting skills. Now, the one... The one thing, the one I'm interested in, uh, we could care less about, uh, bounty hunter, combat medic, or even cy cyber runner. I, even, who cares about gangster at this point? I'm interested in industrialist, <laughs> or even long hauler. What is that like? You become a space trucker? All right, Pilgrim, Professor. Well, Chef, <laughs> you just become a space cook. I don't know. I don't get it. Diplomat. There are optional traits, and these come with you can you can, you can turn yourself into an introvert. It's not just in how you can look, but in how your character plays and develops. I guess it, it you know, that's... Games, and you can unlock new skills as you level up, and then you rank those skills up by using them and completing challenges. And there's deep crafting systems, from running research projects mm -hmm. with the resources you find, to crafting weapon mods needed to survive. Hmm. 
end, you can build your own outposts. These mm. act as a home away from home for survival and resource generation. No Man's Sky, is that you? And how to build each one, and you can hire characters you meet to keep it up and running. Ah, uh, see, that's where I, I kind of have a problem with that part. So, one of my biggest things with like games like that, and I guess the early days of No Man's Sky was and even other like the city builder games that I play like Transport Fever 2 or uh, City Skylines SimCity those old games back in the day I, you know it's like um, it, games that rely too heavily on like micromanagement I know like City Skylines and Transport Fever aren't particularly like that. And yes, micromanagement is kind of a big thing with those games. If you don't like micromanagement, why play them? I don't know. Actually, I don't really know. But, um, you know, games that were, you know, that are too heavy on the micromanagement, that's kind of what I'm worried this game is going to be. Uh, that if you want to set up a base, it's just, you're just going to have to micromanage the hell out of that. Like, some management to a point is fine. Just not the whole game. You can even build your own spaceships. Well, that's uh, a good thing, Todd, because I really kind of... Like, don't get me wrong, it's a unique design. I'm not too thrilled on the ship yes, design as it stands. The look and layout. I mean, hopefully... There's loads of different modules, ship manufacturers, and more. I have to say, it's so cool, we just absolutely love this. Wait. It's not just... I have to say, it's so cool. Alright, so... Changing some of these modules out, that's cool, that's one thing. Changing the color, that's alright. But, <laughs> actually, if anything, that's that's what I kind of like even the most about it. There's nothing worse than being able to customize something, but then getting stuck with, like, some, like, weird, either off color, like, this would be one color, this would be another color looks like you can really do you know customize this wait port four are we using old nautical terms here forward part the four part of the ship is this going to be the aft and is this starboard i see that's interesting that they'd call it port and starboard i mean it is a ship don't get me wrong. Well, we just absolutely love this. It is look nifty. I like that one. Well, it's not just how the ship looks, it's how it performs. From engines to shields to weapon systems. Because yes, you can fly it. I, I remember this part of the video. That's interesting. I hadn't really noticed the lines moving around like that before. It's kind of weird. It looks a little distracting, but hopefully it's subtle enough you don't notice. And then, oh no. I wonder if it's like, you know, a game mode of some kind, like... <clears throat> I, I, 
like how big is flying the ships really going to be? Like, if you're not a fan of like space battles and all that, do you still have to participate in them? I'm not completely turned off by space battles, but we I'm just curious if that's going to be an option. Experience the game. Thanks again for being with us today, and thanks for all the support you've given us over the decades, especially on this game. It's been an incredible journey for us making it. No, thank know. you, Todd. That's really only the beginning, for it's when all of you play it that the real journey begins. And you may be wondering, just how big is this game? So we thought we'd take one last moment and show you. Mm. Let's take a look at one of our planets, Jemison. You can land in New Atlantis, but you can also land and explore anywhere on the planet. And it's not just this planet, it's all the planets in the system. Alpha Centauri. Resource heavy ice balls to Goldilocks planets with life. And not just this system, but over a hundred systems. Over 1,000 planets, all open for you to explore. We can't wait to see what you find. Oh, wait, what was that? All right, so all open for you to explore. We can't wait to see what you find. All right, so that's the one planet. We've seen this one. This is the uh uh the one with the uh <clears throat> the stone wall, right? I don't even know. I'm probably the worst person to do commentary on this. Um, yeah, this looks like kind of looks a little bit like Mars. I kind of that that would be. I wonder if we could uh, go to Mars in this. That would be interesting. That'd be cool. I wouldn't be uh, totally turned off by setting up a a base on Mars. The I this ice planet looks fairly interesting. Mostly empty, but still interesting. The cyberpunk kind of world. Not really sure where this would be. This looks really, you know, this actually looks very unique and interesting. At least it's a unique take on an old aesthetic. So. I, mean, I don't know how unique it truly is, but it's... It's something. And then the ice planet again. Little windmills. Now if we can only have windmills like this in real life, that don't cost an arm and a leg. Alright, so this looks like it's that desert planet from earlier. And then if you look over here, there is some stuff set up. I wonder if that's the town. So we're just like kind of exploring outskirts of where the town is. And then over here is where like the city is. And then this looks really cool. Like, I mean... Say what you say about other Bethesda games, or even other space games for that matter. But this looks, like, pretty cool. I mean, yeah, I'll buy into the hype of how cool it looks. And then, this, so far, is one of my favorite. Because I love forest maps. And, because I, you know, I love the forest. And all that. And no, it's, I mean, these are interesting critters. I'm kind of curious to know what these, uh, protrusions are. Alright. This looks like it might be the same planet, 
just in a different area. And that looks like... Because, you know, the, the animal does look not similar, but looks like it could be the same biome. So, we got some long neck looking dinosaurs. I hope it's not going to be like No Man's Sky where they show the long neck dinosaur alien thing in like one of the trailers and then like never put it in the game. I don't even know if it's in the game now. I know they got some pretty interesting uh, critters that it can uh, procedurally generate. But I don't know. I like the grass and the, the 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 hazy fog. That looks really nice. Of course, you can make anything look good with some post-production work. Like this looks like a very deserty map with some green oasis type of uh plants going on. Got some of these uh palm looking type trees. It's like a mix between like a a palm tree, a Joshua tree, and maybe a uh maple? I don't know. If anything, these look more like what Josh would... Eh. Joshua trees are rather unique. Like, these look like just normal bushes and stuff. And then, obviously, everyone's probably talked this picture to death. This definitely does look like the Mars rover, or a rover in general. If it is Mars, which the... Some parts of the planet do look like this, where you got the lighter sand and ground mixed in with like this darker rock uh, outcropping. And uh, overall, the aesthetic does look like Mars. That contrast, that light sand, dark rock contrast uh, does really look like Mars. I really do like that. And then this looks like the planet that we were on earlier. And then, I mean, that does look nice, but you could, like, alright, so this looks a little bit different. If we go back to here, this looks more empty. So this, you know, like, the way Todd was putting it, and I could kind of see him doing this to where there's going to be some planets that are just mostly resource-specified planets. They're not that inhabitable. I'm assuming you're going to need, like, uh, some sort of suit to go on these planets. This is probably going to be one of them. Uh, a very barren-type planet, so on and so forth. And then, like, planets like this, they, there's, you know, like, even back the previous one we just looked at, it's be no, it would be nothing to put down, like, outpost or a village somewhere down here. So, some of the comments about, oh, these look like empty planets, well, you're just seeing a screenshot of mostly... Stuff that's still a work in progress. Uh, what's to say that they're not going to put a kind of maybe, if not a procedurally generated, but a village like down here in the valley. I mean, you're just up here on this hill collecting resources on Resource Hill. And then like, looks like there might be a little lake or something here or something. But... And then, well, that just looks like, that just looks like the, uh, southwest. And then, big crater. Uh, moon-type planet. Probably resource. Wait. That was an interesting, because that looked like, that looked like the planet we were just, <laughs> hey, it's High Rock. Or Hammerfell. Anyway. Um, uh, I saw these critters down here moving, so 
Uh, there's another one right there. There's some more back here. You know. This, yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> maybe I'm talking on my ass. Hell, maybe it's all just from one planet. Alright, this, this biome looks... This looks like No Man's Sky, if I've ever seen No Man's Sky. I'm gonna leave it at that, but... I mean... Eh. Alright, so then there's more palm trees. Moon. Like I said, I'm not too thrilled about the ship itself. This kind of looks a little weird to me. I mean, of course, it's their own take on it. But, uh... <laughs> Alright, coming 2023. The only real point is, so it says here, coming 2023, and if you looked at Steam a few days ago, you'll notice that it said coming the first part of 2023, which you assume Q1, or the first half, be all the way up to, like, what, maybe August? August, July, that's, like, midway through the year. At least that's what I would list that as. Now, if you go over to the Steam page, all it says... Is coming soon. This game is not yet available. I mean, that's a, they changed it from before, where it said coming 2023. But now they've changed it to coming soon. And then all the same star, you know, all the same uh, scenes we saw. Oh, this is interesting. More from Bethesda. Eh. And then more like this. We all remember Cyberpunk. Jedi Fallen Order. Love that game. Old. Ah, oh, we remember the Old Republic. We love that one. Gotham. Wait a second. Wait. <laughs> Why is the Callisto Protocol listed in here? Like, all these other games feel like RPGs, and are mostly RPGs. W except for... Really, the Callisto Protocol. That's kind of a very linear experience. I don't know. You know, I did kind of find the Callisto Protocol to be as disappointing as everyone else did. I just felt... I don't know. Yeah. Like, the story was interesting and all that. It's just not really my cup of tea. All this looks pretty cool. These are all the same shots, though, that we saw. Let's see. Uh, what does Reddit say? Looks like you can have 78 with limit. Nah. So, Bethesda confirms a standalone show for Starfield is in the works. Oh, God. Why does everything need to be, like, a a show? It's like, everything is a goddamn, like, Netflix show. Or HBO show. Everything is just, like, a show. You know? Even The Witcher got a show. Hell, even, um... Oh, that stupid magic, uh... Book. The, uh... The sand, the something of time or something. Uh, we'll look it up here in a sec. Um, ah, the wheels of time, that show. Which was nothing really like the books from what I heard. But, uh, the wheel of time, not the wheels of time, but the wheel of time. Like, why does everything need to be a show? All the time, like, because, you know, the show just, like, you know, like, reading some of these comments, you could tell, like, 
I don't think they need to make a show out of it. And then, like, I guess we're getting mostly, uh, so, like, the, you know, the date, they said coming soon. I wonder if they're moving it closer. You yeah, know. Whether or not they're moving it closer. Whether or not, uh, you know, whatever. Because, you know, we got, like, box art for it now. Although, I don't know how legit it is. A lot of this is coming from, uh, China. But that would make a little bit of sense. Because, you know, looking over here, I guess we're getting... Alright, so we got... Someone's asking if there's going to be skill checks for certain parts of the ships. I can see that being maybe uh, a thing. Like, some maybe expert level stuff or something that is specific to your class, maybe. I don't know. And I'll just like Fallout 4's crafting system. So. Uh, they just, you know, made it look cooler. I guess. But... Where was the other one at? There was... So that's box art. There was something else. Yeah, this one right here. Another one from the Chinese image board. So, they are already making this stuff. Which would make sense if they were releasing the first half of the year. Or hell, even maybe later on this year. You know, they, this is just, if anything, this maybe feels like, oh, uh, what would you call that? Like a pre, you know, like, this is just what the company sent Bethesda. Is like, this is what the product is going to look like. Uh, something like that, you know. It, it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, the actual box that we're getting. This could be uh, something that one company in China made is like, does this fit your specifications? Something like that. Because, like, I feel like that's what this is. Since it says down here in Mandarin, visit xbox.com slash game starfield for a release date. Yada, yada, yada. It just feels like they're making this stuff. Alright, so... According to Chinese website, these box Xbox with Starfield packaging belong to the production batch on January the 4th. Perhaps the marketing machine has started. Ah. One person says March the 23rd. Because if they're already making the... If they're already making, the, you know, like the packaging and whatnot, I don't know if I really see them releasing the game like even further away. I mean, I know it's just packaging, and you can just... Especially if there's, like, no, like, actual, uh, information to give away on the packaging. As long as it's just, like, this is basic box art type of stuff with, like, a few things here that kind of pertain to legality stuff. Whatever. I mean, we got plenty of leaks all over, you know. Uh, if you go to the website, there's not really a whole lot going on here, especially if you go to, like, news. Uh, check out the latest news, Constellation questions. Uh, yeah, this was all the way from December. <laughs> so, it looks like they're asking questions on Reddit. <laughs> and then, like, we don't... Like, so this is June, and then from June to October, and then from October, a few days later, was another thing. But then we had to wait all the way to the 15th of December. And it's already the, you know, halfway through the first month of the new year. The one thing I thought was interesting, now, I remember... Way back when, when the, ah, this one, 37 seconds long. This little teaser trailer here.
And then that's all you get. <laughs> and not a word on it for... How long? When did this uh, come out? Four years ago. So, yeah, four years already. Well, I mean, all right. Give them the benefit of the doubt. But I remember watching another video of somebody had, and they found the IP Redfall uh, trademarked. Uh, the I guess the term or IP of Redfall, and they were like, well, could mean like some sort of famine or something something like that in uh of like red guard you know like in hammerfell all that jazz and stuff and there was a lot of speculation about where it was you know was it in hammerfell was it in high rock you know all that stuff and then come to find out that redfall is a completely different game that they just revealed. Another new IP that's in development that is not Skyrim whatsoever. <laughs> and if anything, looks like some like that, you know, some PvP uh, BS. Like, like we don't have enough PvPs out there. And because we we all know Bethesda did so well with stars uh, with uh, Fallout 76 that we can totally trust them with another online gaming experience. It's just you know, looking back, I don't know. I'm just rambling right now at this point. Like, I I want Fallout or I want. The Elder Scrolls 6. But. I don't know man. I'm just tired of. Uh, I'm mostly tired of being let down. I am curious though. About. Ship customization. I wonder. If we can make it look like this boat. The NS Savannah. I wonder if we can maybe... Maybe not like make it look exactly like a boat. Because obviously a boat goes in the water. But the basic shape. Because I do love the, you know, like... I do like this basic shape. You know, where you have cargo space, cargo space, cargo space, and then place for the people and all that. It is a brilliant ship design. It's, there was, you know, like this, and we still even use this design today. You know, it's a very popular ship design. I kind of... I kind of wish we can go back to the day of boats like this. I'm so sick of these massive c cargo container ships. Where it's go container or don't carry cargo at all. Or, I mean, I guess you can solve the same problems with like a row, a row, row, roll on, roll off. But, like, that is a beautiful ship you gotta admit and i read an article recently that they want to decommission the damn thing why it's from the latest pictures i've seen it's in beautiful condition it's in beautiful condition so um decommissioning it won't help anything you can't decommission the first ever nuclear powered merchant ship I mean it's been a museum ship for a long you know ever since like 81 
it's been nothing but a, you know, they haven't actually done anything other than, here's a nuclear-powered merchant ship. We used it twice. Membership and donations. Look at that. We can be part of the uh, NS Savannah Association. Hmm. Oh, wait. What am I... I'm getting distracted here. But, like, we can make a... A starship that kind of looks like this, you know? We can have, like, uh... You know, a gun platform, maybe? You know, back here would be the engines. Have a gun platform. Gun Guns up here. And the, uh... The forward and the aft decks. You know, and have plenty of cargo space. And then have... You know, the place for the people to live and whatnot. Because I think... Eh, some of these pictures are not great. Because, it, you know, it was for the longest time... A, uh, it doubled as both a merchant ship and a passenger vessel. And the inside of it, I mean, for the time, it, it looks a little... It looks a little tacky, but... <laughs> I mean, I guess for the time it was in, it was probably like, if anything, it looks like, that's kind of sad looking. Looks like a, a hotel, like, lounge. Like, this is like a uh, convention room uh, dining area. Oh man, can you tell this was designed back in the 60s and 70s? <laughs> That's got to be the ugliest couch I've ever seen. Look at this thing. What is that? <laughs> There's like this whole section you can't use. Because the artist, like you sit this part. And it wraps around. But then it... It's so weird, man. It is so weird. But yeah, it looks like a... Uh, this looks even... Like... What would you call that? Retro postmodernism. That's what I would call it. Maybe kind of a stretch but like even the, like the bridge looks kind of nice like I really love that low tone of green it's really good on e really easy on the eyes and whatnot you got the uh, the helmsman's chair or the pilot chair you know maybe and then you know you got this ugly couch keeps showing up but yeah, it was like a uh, a cargo ship, see, and a halfway cruise ship. So it was like probably like business class. You know, they probably didn't have a first class. They probably didn't have like a uh, economy class. So it was probably just the one class. It's like well, this is where the passengers are, and this is where the crew would be, and that's about it. You could take a, you know, it was designed and thought of before jet aircraft really got off. And it's a shame that we didn't get more boats like this, you know, that serve dual purpose to where, oh, look, Minecraft. Leave it up to the Minecrafters to, uh, to make, they, they, they make anything. But anyway, uh... I don't know, it's, it's a really cool boat, I just thought, I mean, that would look decent as a spaceship. If you could turn that into, like, a spaceship, you would definitely have a, uh, not a pirate vessel, but I guess what pirates, uh, come from, privateers... It'd be like a privateer type vessel, you know, so it'd be like both merchant and passenger, you know, and I guess during times of war, uh, it would be part of the merchant fleet. Yada, yada, yada. We have 
gone so far off topic. It is not even funny. <laughs> well, we were talking. We were talking about Bethesda. So, like, here's the. That was their news. There's not a whole lot going on. Uh, the last thing was from December, and it's not even really about that. So, even the media galleries kind of lacking. Let's see, we got uh, talking quests when that was the age required for the official uh, probably just for the yeah, but let's get some screenshots. This is all I got? Huh. I mean, I ain't gonna lie. This game does look I mean, the concept art looks great but are we really going to get this level of detail mm, maybe biggest question I see that no one else is really asking at least I don't know who else is asking is uh, when's the uh, when's the first naughty mods going to be uh post up like you cuz you know like as soon as this game launches the first mod i i'm almost willing to put money on this the very first mod for this game c b b e i'm going to go with c b b e I'm probably wrong, it's probably going to be UMP, but CBBE definitely will be the first. If, like, I know that they're saying that, oh, well, this is a different engine and all that, or it's a newer upgraded engine. I mean, you know CBE is going to, you know, have a, he's going to have a skeleton or a whatnot before, but... You know that's going to be like the first mod that comes out. Right up there on the Nexus. Log in. Oh yeah, that was another thing. Join Constellation. I mean... Eh, I don't really know what this is. Join Constellation. Receive news. So is it like a newsletter? Or... What? Probably just a newsletter. I'm hoping. I mean, there's really no other thing I can really add to this video. Alright, I guess, like, one more thing to add. If I were to add, like, any closing statements here. Would be on, uh, this is the last part of the article. Where it is possible the studio could make such an announcement... At the upcoming Starfield Deep Dive, which is expected to occur sometime after the Xbox and Bethesda developer live stream, which is January 25th. So not only is the game hotly anticipated, but playtesters have reportedly been loving Starfield. And that actually is, you know, got some weight to it. If the playtesters are saying they like it, then you should probably pay attention to that. You know, just the CEA. Uh, which definitely bodes well for the finished product. That makes it just... That just makes the wait for an official release date that much more difficult. Though someone at Bethesda, yada yada yada. Yeah. I mean, uh, you could... you, you he, He's probably thinking about a delay. You gotta think. You know, these big gig companies, they pay attention to... Uh, they pay attention to each other, and what happens with a lot of them? Well, you know, Bethesda sees what happened to CD Projekt Red. He also seen what happened to No Man's Sky. They also see what happened to themselves in the past. Fallout 76. I, I'm pretty sure they, they know that uh that title was didn't have the greatest release but that being said 
uh, they have probably learned from the past to, they probably know better than to say shit that they probably shouldn't say. It's like, that's why they've been very careful with it. And that's, that's why you see a lot of big studios now, at least what I can see. Uh, they're not, you know, they're trying to keep to the hype train down, right? You know Todd wants to raise that hype train up to, like, past 11 on the scale. You know, this is where the hype is, like, right now. This is where Todd wants the hype level to be at. And down here is where the investors... And everyone else want the hype level to be at. So. Alright. Final thoughts. Um, is the game going to be grand? Probably. Um, I mean, from what I've seen so far of the trailer, it does look pretty vast um now if they're working on all these quests like they say they are and all this extra content you now it's gonna be a decent at least a decent game and i guess you know knowing what we know going into it you know pretty sure that by now everyone kind of knows what the game's about you know you're but uh is the hype going to be even worth it? Uh, I mean, it would depend, I guess, on the uh, individual. Uh, yes, there's already a ton of hype for this game already. And uh, there's probably going to be more of it. I mean, they obviously want to sell this game. They, uh, you know, they had a loss with 76... So Bethesda's got to make up for it, which is probably why they, uh, probably why they went out with the, probably why they had the anniversary edition. So that right there, we already know they, they need to make up for that loss of 76. Um, but, you know, from what I've seen, uh, to go back to the, I guess, the planets, uh, to talk about that, from what I've seen, it looks like each planet's gonna follow, like, a f basic formula, so you're gonna have, like, your, your normal main planets, I guess, you're gonna have, like, where they have these big cities, uh, where a lot of the story's gonna take place, um, you're also gonna have, what I'm assuming, there's gonna be a second one, like, quest planets, that are planets, like, that they designate, these are specifically you go here for a quest so like a small little outpost on one of those rocky planets whatever and then you're probably going to have um resource or ex planets to explore you know just various uh biomes of various uh that you know i mean it all seems fairly creative um so, but I think they're going to follow a basic formula like that. Uh, probably not similar to that of uh, No Man's Sky or well, like Elite Dangerous, or even hell to bring a bring in one that I thought I'd never mention on any channel ever. Uh, oh crap! Star Citizen. Took me a second, but Star Citizen, that game, which has been in what alpha for like the what? Oh, geez, I don't even know how long that game's been out. Probably a lot. I mean, I remember that game. I remember hearing about Star Citizen long back before I could even grow a, a full beard. And now there's parts of my beard that are turning gray. So, it's been a while. When, when you know, when your fans um, think about it, 
when I was 10 years ago, Jesus. What's more than 10 years now that Skyrim's been out? That came out 11, 11, 11, I think, right? If I remember correctly. And yeah, that was, that was a long time ago. Now I'm turning gray, getting old. Jesus. And I'm a millennial, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah. So. But. Yeah, so those are just my few final thoughts that uh, I decided to jot down real quick. Uh, let me know if you have any uh, comments you'd like to share. I'm always open to listening to other people. Uh, like the video if you like it. Dislike it if you didn't. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell icon unless you don't want to. If that gets too annoying, I don't really, I don't really mind. Uh, but uh, I think that's going to be enough for this episode or this. Uh, I don't even know what to call this. Is this like a podcast? Or is it just like a reaction slash... I don't know. I've always had a love for radio. I don't really, but... But, uh, yeah. I think that's it for the video. So, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.